What up? I got nice skin here with me. This ain't a diss song. But, um, yeah, uh huh, you know what it is. I'm a cheese head, y'all niggas cheese whiz. Pittsburgh Steelers, that's nothing. That Super Bowl ring, that's nothing. Pull up in your town, yeah. What are your early impressions of the new linebacker Goodson and how he might be able to help you? Uh, definitely impressed with how he's handled himself since he got here. Uh, very intelligent, has picked it up very quickly. Uh, he was, looks solid in the walkthroughs and in practice, but in, until, as I always say, there's no there's no substitute for for game reps. So uh, he'll certainly he'll certainly be playing uh, in some of our groupings on uh, on Sunday. And just how much, you know, probably depends on a little bit on on Minnesota, you know, what, you know, in response to some of their groupings. But we're confident that that uh, whatever whatever situation we put him out out there in, that that, that he'll be fine. If, if you're wanting to make Minnesota one-dimensional, where, where do you start with it? With, with a run game that runs 38 times, that's Cook, but also on the outside they've got Diggs and Thielen and can have explosive plays in the pass game. Sure, yeah. and that's that's the issue that you have is is uh, you know do you make a call to to stop the run and that now you're you're potentially exposed and on on the back end or hey we're gonna maybe play some uh, split safety and and or roll coverage towards receivers and and now you're you're a little bit light up, uh, up front, so I mean that's all part of the, you know, the, the chess match. Um, but that's that's why they were so productive against Atlanta. It's it's hard to it's it's hard to take away that one thing. So I think it starts I think it starts with Cook. Uh, you know, that's that is critical that that uh, we do a good job and you know not letting him get to the perimeter as you saw what happens uh, in the Atlanta game when 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 he can just circle the defense. Uh, and, and we can't just give him free access to kind of you know downhill inside gaps because I mean he'll, you just look at some of, some of his big runs in the preseason were were a result of that as well. So we've talked all week. We got to play with um, great run fundamentals up front to start, and that's all just the stuff that we preach from day one that uh, you know getting knocked back and uh, getting you know locating the ball, separating you know. You know, getting off of blocks. I mean, we're all we're all going to get blocked. It's just you know, but we have to have that, uh, you know, that that sense, that that feeling that I'm not going to stay blocked. So I think it's real important for for our guys to to go into the game with that that mentality. I saw it right from way up in the press box where we are to the field corner. It looked like Goodson had come out on the field for a couple of times before a snap, and then. Came back out. Was that a decoy, or was that just a change in one? No, it was anticipating what we were potentially going to get from them based on the situation. You know, when they were backed up, I was thinking they might go bigger people. So uh, we put he's he was in our base grouping, which, which which we obviously ended up not playing at all. But that was just to um, you know anticipate because what they they do a good job of they hold their offensive personnel on the sideline. They just put their linemen out there, maybe one or two skill guys. So you you have to wait. To know what they're in, so usually you like to have one group out there ready to go, and then if you got to change, you change. Yeah, um, how are you able to stop the run? I know the Bears didn't do it a lot last week, but how are you able to stop the run with kind of an unorthodox defensive package? Well, I, I just think it it, uh, it it goes back to what I just talked about: is that that our guys, I thought, have really bought in to, to how we're teaching it, and that schematically, I don't, I don't think it was that uh, that unorthodox. I mean, we played a lot of. Uh, you know, just five guys up front, and, and ended up playing a safety at essentially a linebacker position for for some of the game. So, um, you know, I, I just thought our guys did a good job, you know, reading their keys and, and you know, beating blocks and, and you know, separating and, and tackling. That was one thing I was pleased with was was uh, was we how how we tackled. I know that was an issue coming out of the preseason, but mo most of it wasn't with the guys that are that uh, that were out there. But I, I think that's. That's got to be critical for us that uh, you know the stopping the run part, especially you know we had some issues on the edges last year, and that's one of the, the big reasons that we made the moves we made in in the uh, in the off season was to be able to to have you know kind of that, that bookend look. Uh, it's, it's difficult to to turn the corner, and, and now we have we feel like we have some pretty good guys inside that we could funnel the ball back to. Um, you would know more than I would. Is that 
you basically ran three three five with just Blake. I mean, not the whole game, but for a bunch of things, we just Blake it inside. Is that a a fairly uncommon package? You know, if I haven't seen that, I know it's kind of a big thing in college, but I guess I mean, what's the genesis? Of uh, what it's there? it's really our base front. So if we were in base defense and we have our two outside linebackers and our three inside guys, it's it's really kind of combining our base front with a nickel secondary. So in order for us to have a, because normally you're nick, when you have a nickel on the field, most teams are in, in a four down look. Uh, but since we chose to go five down, then the, the, the player that's off the field is, would, be the, would be the other inside linebacker. So it's really just piecing together um, a base front with a, with a five DB secondary. If you go back to last year, I mean, we, we played it a decent number of snaps uh, as well. That was, a, that was a, I wouldn't say it was a huge part of what we did, but we definitely ran it at a, a good night. I'm pretty sure it was that package was up every game. Is that a... Um a response to just being short at inside linebacker, or is that a good package for today's NFL where you know it seems like the Bears don't want to spread the field? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's probably a little bit of both when we did we did it last year uh, as well. Uh, I, I just know that when uh, the, the league has trended so much to spreading the field and, and getting uh, they, they, when they go 11 personnel, they get three wide receivers and. and most of the time in the past, that the response has been, you know, we got to go with a four-man front, two linebackers, and, and now get a nickel secondary out there. And we, and we have that. We have certainly have that package. But I just know it, it can cause problems having, you know, when I was in Cleveland and, and talking to our guys that were coaching the offense, that that, that can cause problems uh, when they're so used to going against a four-man front. And, and they built their team, if they're 11 personnel, to, to – Essentially, block a four-man front, and now we're now we're giving them five down looks. I know it it causes a little bit more, you know, causes some more issues. And if you're playing a team that's got some speed that want to, that wants to get to the edge, it's a, it's a lot more difficult to to get to the edge. You know, when we have two big edges and a five down front, that, as opposed to you know uh, just a regular four down front. Mike, how much uh, man coverage do you have to play in that situation? And do you feel confident, more willing to do? Put pressure on uh, the corner position. We got Alexander King on the field. Uh, I, you know, I think you have to mix it. I don't think you can be just a steady diet of any one thing. I don't think we're good enough that we can just line up and in, in the same look and the same coverage. So uh, I think you have to mix it, and be able to give those corners some downs off, uh, and be able to play some some split safety or or at least on on half the field or uh, you know the man stuff where you're. Where you're giving them help, whether it's whether it's over the top of the half field safety or it's just in the post. I mean, we don't play a lot of true cover zero where they, where they don't have any help. Uh, I, I just think it's a matter of of, of mixing it. Now, today's NFL, uh, you know, a lot of our zones end up turning into man anyway. Those corners, when they press on the outside, we could be playing zone, but that once the route gets down the field, it ends up being on top man anyway. So. If you ask them, I think they feel like they played man coverage every play. So, Mike, the clock was winding down in Chicago. It was a great shot of your players celebrating with you and jumping all over you. And they said after the game, there was a side of maybe excitement they hadn't seen from you during the preseason. Just you coached a lot of teams, a lot of defenses, but how was that win or performance maybe different? And what did you learn about your defense? Well, I, I just think for the whole unit, it was a, it was just one of those nights where where everything kind of everything fell into place. I mean, we we were uh, we were prepared. I thought we had a really good training camp, just as far as building the foundation of this is what we're doing fundamentally and this is what we're doing schematically. And then as training camp started to wind down, uh, the, the, we we began to gear our uh, preparation towards Chicago. I mean, there were times we were working on it and. They didn't know we were working on it, but we were, we were working on it. Uh, and then when we actually got to the game week, that this was a group that that um, they were confident, they were prepared. I mean, that's what we always talk about. That you know, the best way to be confident and to have that swagger to you is to is to know your material inside and out. So uh, this is one of the more intelligent groups that uh, that I've been around. I mean, we, we can give them a lot; they can handle a lot because the communication's real good. They understand it, and they let us know when when they don't. Uh, that there's a, there's a lot of that that feedback, so uh, just the way it played out. I mean, I just thought it was a it was just one of those nights where, where things fell into place, and um, you know, I, obviously I enjoyed it at the end, but I almost got knocked to the ground too, and that, that I know that would have been ended up uh, looped on on the internet over and over if that if that had happened. But you no, know, it was I just thought it was it was just great for our 
not just for the players, but for the staff, you know, to, to cement the buy-in. You know, we ask them to do a lot, what they do preparation, what they do out of the building, what they do on the practice field. We ask a lot of them, and you're, you're hopeful that you get the results. And, and the fact that we did, I think just, I mean, they were all in anyway, but I, I just think that, that cemented that e even more. You had some, some run on the sideline, obviously, during the preseason, but having a meaningful game under your belt on the sideline, what did, what did you think of the experience? And do, do you think it, it really made a tangible difference, maybe in communication or, or whatnot with the defense? Uh, yeah, I haven't been down there before. I mean, the, the, the positives of being down there were, I mean, that's, I experienced it that, that night. I mean, I, I didn't feel like it was any different other than being down there. I mean, that was probably the loudest national anthem I've ever I've ever heard, but uh, once the game started, I mean, I just just felt like it. And you get into that mode, it's just you know, it's business as usual. And you know, we go out there, we have a series, and we come off. We got to make corrections. We make them. We let the position coaches do it. I mean, we have a procedure that we go through, and uh, I think our staff does an excellent job, you know, with the players and getting feedback and making. You know, we we made some changes in game that that uh, that that helped us later in the game. So uh, no, I. I I enjoyed being down there, and, and that's, you know, it just confirmed to me, you know, why it was never any doubt when I, when I made the decision. I wasn't going to, it wasn't, hey, I'm going to try this, and, you know, it was full speed ahead. Mike, I know you're on the Minnesota, but there can't be too many games where a team signs three free agents on one side of the ball, and then in the first game out, they all have a big impact, whether it's Adrian with the pick, or the receiver with the pressure to the sack, or Preston with the sack. I'm just wondering if you could take us back to leading into free agency when maybe Goody talked with you. I assume you guys together kind of conjured up a little bit of which guys you liked, and I'm just wondering what those conversations were like because they looked like perfect fits for you. Sure. And we, and we, uh, there's an evaluation process that, that we go through that, that uh, we, we get a list of names. Um, and kind of based on need, the list might be bigger at certain positions. We had a good number of outside linebackers. Um, to look at, so myself and, and Mike Smith went through it, and and Zedarius was was a guy that just jumped off the tape, and, and not far behind was was Preston. So, um, the, you know, the fact that we ended up getting both, I think we, we would have been thrilled with with uh, with with one of those one of those two guys, and the fact that we were able to pull that off, I, it, it, I thought was a you know just a tremendous move um, by Goody and, and his group, and then uh, evaluating Adrian. I mean, that was. That, that was pretty easy. I mean, he, he uh, I, I know he was kind of, you know, the other safety down there was a pretty good player and, and, and made more splash plays. But when you just look at his level of consistency and then, then just knowing people that have worked with him, coached him, just his professionalism and communication and how he makes the guys around him better. And that, that showed up um, you know, last, last Thursday night. I know he made the big play. But he was just his level of consistency through the game, making sure we were lined up, making the plays he was supposed to make. Uh, and I know all three of those guys made big plays, but when you just look at them, their level of consistency throughout the game was, to me, what was more impressive than just the, the handful of plays they made. So you mentioned the bookends before. Um, I know your reputation is whatever you give me, I'm going to figure out a way to make it work. But does it allow you to do different things and do the things that you like best as a defensive coordinator? to now have some guys that really fit the MO that you would like to have? Yeah, I've always, my history, as you, as you know, has always been looking for the versatility. And, and I think that's important for, for a couple different reasons, as I've talked about here before, that uh, you can use guys in a variety of ways. You know, some of our pressures where we, we dropped some of, those, some of those outside backers. I think if you get Guys that, can, that are only one-dimensional, it doesn't take an offense long to figure out that, hey, this is what this guy does, and they don't do anything else with him. So uh, there's a lot of things that we can do schematically that, that it's the exact same call, but we just put different guys in different roles. And that, that we're not going to put them in, in a position that they can't do, but, but when you have those guys that are versatile, uh, that, that any time we can do something that's, that's easy for us, that's hard on the offense, because they do the same thing to us. So any time we can do that, that's a plus, and then the, the versatility part too. It, it also helps you with your depth. That when you have a guy that can do multiple things, that a, an outside linebacker that you can cross train as defensive lineman can play in, or, or outside backer you can cross train to play off the ball, or a safety that can also play nickel, a corner that can slide in to play safety. I mean, th those types of things. You always want to be in the mode of we got our best eleven out there, and and sometimes if you, if everybody's kind of locked into their position and you're just 
bumping the next guy up on the depth chart, you're, you, that's not always going to be the case, having your best 11. With, uh, thinking back to your film study before for UC, what, what did you think of, what just seems that Darius as a pass rusher? I mean, he really only had the one good year last year. Um, so what did you see last up? Because obviously he was terrific against the Bears on Thursday. Yeah, I mean, that was when you just, uh, I, I know we didn't have the, the uh, you know, the number of reps in, in Baltimore, but when you just watched his plays and just isolated on him, I mean, it didn't take much to figure out that, that he's a, uh, that he's a special pass rusher just because of the, um, not just his size, but his strength. And his, you know, it's rare that you have a guy that big that has that good a get off, is that good with his hands. Uh, and he, he's, he's very, um, just from a football stamp, football smarts as far as understanding how to rush the passer and how, you know, how to attack certain offensive linemen. He studies them during the week. Uh, and then there's the versatility thing here. He can, he can kick down, we can rush him over the center, over the guard, over the tackle, over tight end. I mean, we can, we can use him, uh, we can use him anywhere. Um, but that's, I mean, it was easy watching that. That was an easy evaluation watching the film because we also knew about the guy as well. And that's why it was, uh, I mean, we were thrilled when, when, uh, when, when we got that news that, that he was coming. Mike, what did you think of Savage from the assignment standpoint? Uh, I thought he was solid. I mean, he, he, uh, a rookie in his first game on that type of stage, you may be, may be worried about him a little bit. Uh, but he's never, I've never felt like, you know, or looked at him like, wow, this, it looks big for him, which sometimes can happen with, with, uh, with rookies. But he was, he was probably one of the loosest guys before the uh, before the game. Usually, you feel that you see those guys, and they you know they can, you know, they're staring straight ahead, and and they're 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 practically locked up. Whereas, I mean, he was he was just um, you know one of the guys and was doing his thing pregame, and I, he he was the least of our our worries just because of how, a how he prepares and and in, uh, in the classroom, and then how he takes that to the practice field, and then just he he and. Adrian and the rest of the secondary, I think, have really built. I mean, that's a tight room. They've built the bond of. They communicate really well. Um, you know, it's it's. Guys aren't going to kind of let another guy go astray. They're all they're all making sure that that uh, they make eye contact and they signal and all that stuff. So, it's nice to have that group that has that type of cohesion, that chemistry on, on the uh, on the back end. Love my team. Yeah, that's the team with them big G's on the helmet.